The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Hey, welcome to the program. Where are you? How are you? It's uh, the Ron Van Dam Show. I'm the person with the name of it. How are you? How are you? What would you like me to talk about today for 30 minutes? Nothing? You want me to shut up completely? All right. I can't do that. Um, How are you? Good to be with you. I do. I come. I I see. I come. I conquer. I come into the studio. Boy, something wrong with me today. (laughs) Watch out. Something's wrong with me today. Uh, I come into the studio once a week to do the visual version of the radio show that I've been doing th- for 30 years now in a uh, an abbreviated version of thereof. I used to do the uh, morning show for three hours a day on uh, on broadcast radio since 1992. And now I'm doing this half hour thing and that's better for me. If you want to listen to the show that I do every weekday, Monday through Friday, you can hear me on NewEnglandBroadcasting.com or just Google my stupid name, Ron Van Dam, on any platform you got. The Amazon Music, the iHeartRadio, Stitcher, SoundCloud, whatever, SoundSlash, all those things, it's on everything, the Pandora's and the Apple, with the Apple things, and the uh, Audacity or Audio City. I don't, I don't even know half of these stupid, stupid platforms. How are you? Uh, I woke up this morning and I went on Facebook and I found out that today is not my birthday. <laughs> That's all Facebook is good for as far as I'm concerned. Nothing else whatsoever. But it will tell you when it's your birthday, and it will let, every, let everybody else know. I have no idea when anybody's birthday is unless I go to the Facebook page, which I go to because f- I'm forced to. And then I can tell which people uh, have their birthdays and consider me their friends, when indeed I don't even know who they are. But I send them a little birthday wish from the heart. It's really very deep feelings, very, very great emotions that I set forth. I send them a message that says, happy birthday. (sighs) Wow. Is that deep or what? That's what I do. That's what they want. That's what they're going to get. So welcome to the program. Today, I wanted to talk about psychics, and I don't know why. I don't know how this came up, as a matter of fact. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, an acquaintance of mine. And I use, uh, I don't say friend very frequently. I say acquaintance. It's when I know somebody rather well, well enough to have conversation with them. Maybe I had lunch with them once or twice in a millennium, something like that. But friend, no. Definition of a friend for me, when they ask, you say, yes, I will drive you to the airport. Or when they ask, you say, yes, I will help you paint your house. For a pizza, of course. Or, yes, I will help you move. Other than that, don't count on me because I'm not your friend. Because I won't do any of those things anyway. (laughs) I'll come up with an excuse. I know we've been friends forever, but you want to move? I can't do that. I don't don't know how. I don't know what I'm doing with moving. You don't want me to move with you. You, you, your half, half your stuff will be missing. I'll move it, and I'll move it somewhere else. I'm, I'm that stupid. Don't ask me to move. Drive you to the airport? I don't think you want that. Do you want to get there on time or alive? You don't want me to drive you. Paint your house? Sure. What color do you want? I'll paint it and also everything else around it and the trees because I'm sloppy. I don't know how to paint. You're going to get me a pizza if I help you paint? Oh, my God. What a payment schedule. So, no. And that's pretty much it. Anyway, I have a friend. I was going to tell you a story. I don't think I've told it before on the air because it's very embarrassing. 
I had a friend who was really into psychics. She lived her life by psychics. There's a very fine line between psychics and psychotics, as far as I'm concerned. You got the first part of the word there at play already. She believed in psychics, and she went to see this woman, and uh, her name was Sue, and she was a psychic, and I won't tell you what town she lived in because I don't know. I do know, but I'm not going to say. But her name was Susan, and this girl was a psychic, this lady. And apparently, she did her psychic stuff, her psychic readings, I think you call them, out of her kitchen. Odd, but true. Um, obviously, she saved a lot of space on uh, a lot of rent, rental space uh, stuff. You know, Usually, when you're driving down the street, if you see somebody who has an actual space and they're psychics, the building will usually look like a witch lived in there. Uh, the sign will be purple with uh, big stars on it, and it'll be some kind of like psychic or madam butterfly or something like that. And don't go into those places because a lot of people never come out. But this woman was uh, running her, uh, her psychic readings out of her kitchen, and apparently she was quite popular because there were a number of, a number of people who would go to her house and, and just sit there and uh, wait to be seen next in the kitchen. So uh, my friend uh, said to me, Iran, would you like to come? And I said, no. And she says, well, you're going with me whether you like it or not. And I said, okay, then why'd you ask? So I go there and I don't know why. I didn't know anything about psychics. I've never been to a psychic reading before, nothing like that. I see them in the movies and on television and they look kind of entertaining, but absolutely absurd. So we go there, and uh, my friend goes into kitchen, the kitchen with this uh, woman named Sue. She was dressed in regular clothing. I think she's wearing sweatpants. I don't think psychics should wear sweatpants. They need the cone-shaped hat with the flowing dress and the crystal ball. Beyond that, uh, that's, you know, dressed apart. But she comes out in her sweatpants, and she says, Oh, hi, how are you? Come on into the kitchen, and who is your friend here? And I, and I said out loud, not a friend. I will not help her move. Uh, and she said, my friend is Ron. I says, Ron, uh, you can sit on my couch here in the living room and uh, we'll be about 20 minutes. I said, okay, fine. Now, this is before cell phones. This goes back about 12 years at least. Before cell phones. So uh, when you sat on a couch, all you really could do was just sit on the couch. And I looked around the living room, and it looked kind of normal. There was there were no dead frogs or, or or bodies anywhere. So I figured, okay, I guess this is fairly safe, because psychics kind of creep me out, you know, because they say that they can they can contact the the underworld or the afterworld or the afterlife. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and it seems like a, you know just a very weird thing, you know. They don't meet these people every day. So she's in there for 20 minutes, and when she comes out, she looks like she was, like, born again. Not only was she born when she was a fetus, but for some reason now she's born again. And she comes out. I said, how was your reading? She says, incredible. <laughs> what? Incredible. And then she looks at me, and she says, wait till I tell you what she said about you. Wait a minute. Excuse me? Wait till I tell you when we get outside what the psychic said about you. What? I, I just accompanied you here. I was sitting on the couch. Why is she talking about me? What's going on here with the psychic person? She says, wait till I tell I said, oh, you said that. So we get out of her place. And uh, my friend says to me, uh, the psychic said that in a few days, within a few days, you're going to get really, really sick. You won't die or anything, but you're going to be in a really sick state. <sighs> what, what, what sick state? Florida? No, you're going to get really sick. You're, you're going to be sick. And I, I looked at her and I said, is this, is this right? Is, is this supposed to happen? I didn't go in for a reading. 
You did. And now you're coming out and she read me sitting on a couch? It's not why I came here in order to be freaked out like this. She says, don't, don't freak out. That's what she said. I'm just telling you what she said. She said, your friend out there, he's going to be uh, quite sick in a few days. But don't worry, he'll survive. Oh, great. That's fantastic. Well, I was pissed. Uh, I, I drove her back to her place and, and uh, actually just slowed the car down and pushed her out because I was pissed. I said, how, this is not, is this against the law? Are people allowed to, to predict things about other people without them soliciting that, that service? Is, is this, is this legal? Apparently it is. So now I'm walking around for like 24 hours later wondering, oh my God, I, I, I better tidy up my, my, my business here. I, I, I better create my will. I've, 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 I've only got 24 hours to live. I, it, it was a horrible, horrible feeling. Here's the weird part. The next day, I got really, really sick. I had a stomach flu or something, but my stomach was like very, very painful. I did run a temperature. I had a fever. I didn't feel like doing anything. I was just like really feeling horrible. And my immediate thought was, damn that psychic. Could this be real? Well, you know what? Um, no, it can't. Uh, I, I was never, I, I believe in stuff, but I also don't. And I know that just because this woman said I was going to get sick, it doesn't mean I'm going to get sick. And the woman knew about that. I don't think that's the case. What happened here was I am such an idiot that there's a thing called psychosomatic where someone says something and you start to be so concerned about what they said, you actually become what they said. I don't know how that works. The mind is a powerful thing, not hers, mine. And if I think I'm going to get sick, I guess I really do. I don't know. To this day, I can't explain how that occurred. The other explanation might be, maybe I was getting sick at the time. Maybe she was at one time a nurse or a nurse's aide or a candy striper. Do they still have those? I don't even know what they are. Uh, maybe she, maybe I looked pale that day, and uh, I didn't know it. I don't look in the mirror. I don't know what the hell's going on with me. Nobody else told me I was looking sick or about to get sick, but apparently, maybe she's. May, I think this is what psychics do. I don't think they really have psychic abilities. I do think that they are very, very able to read people. They're very able to read people, and she probably saw that here's a guy who doesn't believe in psychics because I didn't look like I did. Uh, I, maybe I was smirking when I walked into her house like, oh, God, psychic, well, yeah, really. Maybe I was doing that. I don't even remember. And she wanted to get back at me, and she uh, laid some type of a, uh, a curse upon me. I don't know. But that actually happened. That's a true story. I'm not making that up. I was very mad at my friend, although it wasn't her fault, but uh, perhaps she shouldn't have told me that, or she should, should, should have said to the psychic, uh, excuse me, this reading is about me, not about my friend, so please do not mention him. I don't know, but that's what happened. I don't really quite believe in psychics. I do believe that some people might have these incredible abilities to read other people. That's possible. But actually, to see dead people, I don't think so. I, you, know, you know what? That's my opinion. Actually, we can get into the religious aspects of that, but we're not going to because that's always trouble when I do that on a talk show. I've gotten into trouble about doing that before. I'm not going to do it again. I've learned my lesson. Keep religion out of it. But in a similar sense... Some people really believe in this. 
And I can't say anything wrong about that because what you believe in is your own thing. I have no right to criticize your beliefs in any way, shape, or form. If you believe in psychics, I don't believe you're really out to hurt society or anything like that. So it's, it's a harmless, okay, whatever kind of thing. But I don't believe in psychics. My friend who went to the psychic obviously did, does, I guess. And uh, I don't at all. Uh, so it doesn't come up in conversation at all. She believes in fate. Fate. And I said to her, do you even know how to spell fate? And she said, sure, F-E-I-G-H-T, like in freight or weight. I said, yeah, that's right, sure. Anyway, um, she believes in fate, and, and I, I don't think I do. I, I believe in it happened, it just happened to be. You know, like it's, people say, you know, I... I was, I was sitting in my house, and I hadn't, hadn't been sitting in my house all day. And as soon as I walked in the door, the phone rang, and I picked it up, and the person on the phone said, I'm one of the producers of Jeopardy, Jeopardy in Los Angeles. Uh, we'd like you to be a contestant. You passed the test that you did online. We're going to fly you out here uh, at our expense uh, with a hotel room, and you'll be a contestant on Jeopardy. I said, oh, my God. I mean, uh, uh that's fate. No, it's not. No, it's not. You happen to be home and the phone rang and you already had applied to be a contestant on Jeff. No, Ron, it's fate. If I hadn't been there at that exact moment to answer that phone call, they may have gone on to somebody else. Yeah, and? But the fact that I was there to answer the phone, that's fate. That's what fate is. No, that's what just happened to be is. Some things are a coincidence. It's happened to me many times in my life. Not a lot, but it has. You know, uh, if I didn't go to that cocktail party and meet that person, I would have never had the family that I have, gotten married and had this wonderful family. It was fate that I met him. No, it wasn't. You meet people all the time. This one you liked, you married the sucker. That's not fate. Some people believe that their entire life is charted out on paper somehow and kept in an archives by angels somewhere. I, I don't know. But everything that happens in their life is already planned. And when you live your life, you're just fulfilling the plans that they made for you. Oh my God. No. You were put on this earth to be independent and to pursue your own happiness, not to live out a charted architectural plan for you. Psychics. Now, like any other profession... There may be some that actually are. I don't know. But most of them are not. And it's the bad ones that ruin the entire industry. You know what I mean? It's like the bad priests that ruined uh, the whole church thing for a while. Similar. Sorry, said I wouldn't talk about religion. But it's the same thing. There's good and bad of everything and everybody. There's a lot of bad psychics that are out to take your bucks and to manipulate your your things so that it sounds like they know you but they really don't they're good at that it is a talent are there real psychics i don't know i've been told through my 30 years of radio through interviews that there are psychics that work with police departments police detectives in solving murder cases finding missing, missing people, finding lost children, and they work with police departments, but police departments don't talk about it because it's embarrassing that they do that. 
I've told I've been told that's true in many cases. However, if there were really some really great psychics around, why aren't they continually finding lost people, solving every murder, finding bodies that they can't find for the uh, for the trial? Uh, yeah, missing thing. Why can't if they're really psychics? Why can't everything be found and everything be solved? We we lost we lost our our little son uh, Johnny um, uh, a week ago, and we're we're going crazy. We don't we don't know where he is. Was he kidnapped? Was he is he uh, is he okay? Well, let's bring in a psychic. Where's Johnny? Oh, he's in a closet at uh, at, a, at an airport, LaGuardia Airport, in New York. He's lost. You'll find him on the uh, the mezzanine and on the Grand Concourse. Thank you. There he is. Johnny, what the hell? But that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. Why not? If you have psychic abilities to that extent, wouldn't you put that to the the use of, of humanity to stop the pain and the agony of, 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 of a horrible, horrible situation? I interviewed a psychic once about that very question. I didn't want to ask the question because it sounds very accusatory because I don't think there's an answer to it, but I asked this of this psychic. And the psychic responded by saying, the reason that we don't uh, find every missing child and solve every uh, inexplainable murder and find every body is because we're not supposed to. What do you mean you're not supposed to? Who told you this? Well, we're not, we may not be meant to find that particular body. You're not meant to do it by whom? What are you talking about? Either you have the ability or you don't. <sighs> Look, in life, you've got to chart your own course. You can't go to somebody else, pay them bucks, and say, what's going to happen to me tomorrow? Am I going to meet the person of my dreams? Yes, you will. When? Very soon. What's he going to look like? You know. Is he going to be tall? Do you want him to be tall? Yes, I do. He'll be tall. Uh, it's I I don't I, it's a psychic game. Let me let me let me give you an example. Go to a psychic, and the psychic says, "Hmm, uh, you have a dog, don't you?" No. Um, you have a cat, is that right? No. Uh, you own an SUV. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Is it? It is black, isn't it? <gasps> How did you know that? Your sister has a mole on her left cheek. I don't have a sister. I have a brother. But you want a sister with a mole on her cheek, don't you? Well, yes, I do. I've always wanted a sister. That's what it is. You're going to Florida. No, I'm not. You want to go to Florida? Yes, I do. You're amazing. All right, cut it out. Just cut it out. That's what they do. And you know, with the internet these days, everybody's profile is on Snapchat, uh, Instapot, uh, Facebook. You can find anything out about anybody in great detail and great background. The wonders of the internet, right? So, uh, these days, it's not that big a deal to get some dirt on somebody. It was a time before all these social media platforms when being a psychic was really a little bit impressive. Now, you just did a little homework. Uh, come on. Now, I'm, putting, I'm, putting, I'm sorry. I'm not putting down all psychics. There might be some that are indeed good. But, you know, the people that, if that's you... 
I'm just saying, chart your own life. Don't go to somebody else to find out what's going to happen to you. You make what happens to you. That's the idea of this whole thing. I'm almost running out of time. I'll leave you with uh, one thought for the day. Because that's all I'm capable of doing. You know the term, happy wife, happy life. Well, it's absolutely true. It's not just a little saying. It is in the Bible. I think it's Leviticus chapter 16, paragraph 7. And it says, quote, happy wife, happy life. And it's true. Do you know why women rule the world and they do? It's because they get everything they want. Men are only created to serve the females. And it wasn't like that before when women uh, took back seats to everything. Now they're in the driver's seat and payback's a bitch. You want to be happy in your life if you're married? Make sure your wife is happy. Then you're going to be happy too in many ways. It doesn't work the other way around at all. There's no like happy man, happy life. Because it doesn't matter if the man's happy or not. It doesn't make any difference. If the guy's happy and the wife's not happy, it's not going to be happy. You know it's true in every single case. In this country. In other countries, not so much. They're a little backward. They haven't caught up yet. But here in this country, happy wife, happy life. There's no expression like happy man, not a fan. That should be the expression, but it's not. So, my advice to you, uh, if you depend on somebody else uh, to chart your life for you, yeah, I, I, maybe I've convinced you that, all right, do a mixture then, but don't, don't put your life in somebody else's hands and just wait for them to tell you what's going to happen to you. Because it kind of is, you got to admit, a little weird. The other thing is, if you're a guy and you're in a heterosexual relationship, or even just a partner deal, make the other person happy. It makes a whole bit of whole bit of difference. Making yourself happy, not so much. Making the other person happy, a world of treasures. I'm serious. Give it a shot. It's amazing how that happens. Women rule. They rule the world. And they know it. And it's about time too. Because men screwed it up. Men didn't do a very good job ruling the world. Did a horrible job, as a matter of fact. Not good. Nothing to gloat about. Women are saying, step aside. We'll take it from here. We know what we're doing. This is the only country in the entire galaxy that has not had a female president yet. Why? We're not as forward-thinking as we think we are, are we? Not necessarily. We got a ways to go. I'm out of time for today. I'll be back again next week, whenever you watch this thing. Till that time arrives, join me on my uh, weekday, Monday through Friday program. You can go to newenglandbroadcasting.com or just Google my name, Ron Van Dam. I'm all over the place. It's not a pleasant situation, but I am. Until next time, I wish you peace.